Hello, this is Tristan from CardioCritic.com and this is a short video presentation of the Sunto Spartan Trainer Wrist HR. This is the entry level watch to the Sunto Spartan range which replaced the Ambit back in mid 2016 initially with this Ambit Ultra and the sorry, Spartan Ultra and the Spartan Sport. This is a Spartan trainer. I will list the main differences across the bottom of this video just to help you to make your decision. But for most people that aren't full on adventure racers and don't need a barometric pressure sensor and can live without a sapphire glass and are happy to have the polyamide glass, scratch resistant glass here in a glass reinforced polyamide case, then this model at almost half the price of the Spartan Ultra and the Spartan Sport is just exceptional value for money. I've been personally selling and testing Sunto products since 2000 and I can say confidently that the Spartan Trainer Wrist HR is without doubt the best value for money GPS sports watch that Sunto have ever produced. If you've read reviews on the Spartan Ultra and the Spartan Sport that are fairly negative, I would have to say I agreed with them when the product first came out. I personally only gave it two and a half out of five stars. However, over the six months, Sunto have reviewed and released many versions of firmware. And the watch now, from me personally, the Spartan Ultra and the Spartan Sport, not this one, get a solid four, four and a half out of five star review. Uh, now this is the entry level to that range, but this is getting a five star review from day one. So this doesn't need any firmware upgrades, it's already brilliant. I just need to make that point, make it clear because the Ultra, Spartan Ultra and the Spartan Sport were brought out too early. Sunto probably realized that and it needed, uh, I don't know, half a dozen or, so, or more firmware upgrades to get it up to scratch. But it's now a very good, competent watch. Uh, competing with products like the um, Garmin Phoenix 3 and Garmin Phoenix 5, etc. Okay, so I want that. I've made that point. Hopefully, um, that's sunk in. But this is exceptional. It's exceptional value for money, and it uses the same firmware that the the Spartan Ultra and the Spartan Sport use. That products that cost almost twice as much as this product. So everything they do. Um, this does with the exception of barometric pressure monitoring features which this watch does not have a barometric pressure sensor it gets its altitude from GPS in a similar way to the Spartan Sport okay so I'm going to be um, listing the main differences across the bottom of the screen and I'm just going to go through the purpose of all my videos is just to show you what the watch does if you were to own one how to operate it um, just to give you a feel for the for the unit okay so first thing I'll say is this strap is lush it is so soft and comfortable um, it's got a bit of give in it so unlike say for example this polar strap here which really doesn't move much you find that you you know you put it on and you might think, oh, I'm in between two holes on this strap. But this one, it's just got a nice amount of give in there. So it, comfort-wise, which is important, is spot on. It's lightweight. I think it weighs about 56 grams compared to 70 odd grams. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going into all the full technical spec. I don't, I'm not, that's not the purpose of my videos. Size-wise, here's a, um, a Garmin Phoenix 3. Um, you can see there's probably about six, five, six miller difference there. Um, obviously from the side, you see the Garmin is a much bigger watch. So it's a nice mid-sized unit, more similar to the new Garmin Phoenix 5S in size. So it will fit everybody. Okay, so as I've said, this uses the same firmware that you'll find in the Spartan Ultra and the Spartan Sport. Okay, let's just go through this middle button here. Is your main sort of go-to button that's just changing the sub menus on my chosen screen I've got my steps and my progress indicator the date on the bottom time of day 
battery, and there I've got uh, my dual time. These buttons here, up and down, top left is the light, bottom left is generally back. So up, and down. So remember, these videos, I'm not gonna go through every single setting, I'm just going through the main displays. Now when you go to a display, you'll notice that there's dots on the bottom, they're for the sub menu. So this tells me I've done 1000 steps today. If I press this forward button, it will take me to the next screen, which is activating the heart rate. So this is if I want to get a snapshot of my heart rate. It doesn't record it, it's just to give you an idea of your heart rate. Maybe if you're at rest, relaxing, or if you're just, whatever you're doing, you can take your heart rate like that. This button will take me back and back again. So these are my average daily steps. As always, I'm always wearing many different watches and testing many different watches, so I don't always wear one watch all day. Um, and we can go up, back to time of day. So let's go to these, let's go through these. So it, we, in activity, steps, heart rate, and weekly summary. Next one down is my training, which shows the time spent on the bike, running and multi-sport. Press again. I could have uploaded some training plans into the watch. That would tell me what I've been doing, what I've got to coming up. Back again to a summary of the most recent exercises. Sorry, summary of exercise time for that week. So for example here, cycling, 2.4 hours, 2 hours 40 minutes, sorry, 43 miles, and the number of calories. Let's go back again. Press it again, and that will take me to running. And press it again, that was just me testing the multi-sport, the triathlon mode. Okay, and as if you press down again, that takes us to the next feature which is your heart rate recovery which there's no sub menus to the recovery so I'll just do those again so from time of day down for your activity status and activity tracking down again for a summary of your training time back will take you to the specific weekly totals of all your different types of exercise and forward will take you to your planned training and down again, I'll take you to your recovery status. So if I just had a really hard session, that would say, for example, you know, 36 hours. If I had a, uh, I did a five, 5K run yesterday, quite hard with a few intervals, and it told me I had a nine hour recovery. Okay, so from time day for you up, we go to exercise mode, up again to navigation, up again to logbook, which gives detailed uh, historical summaries of your training sessions, stopwatch which is handy and convenient if you just want to time something, and to settings. Okay, so we'll just quickly walk through those. Exercise mode. Now in exercise mode, all of these sports profiles, you set these, it comes with a set of default ones, but then you can set your own from the Move Count website, not through the phone currently, which hopefully we'll be able to do soon. So you've got running basic, for example, cycling basic. Now, if you find that the screens you want aren't necessarily there, the training pages, then you can create and edit your own. So I've made, for example, cycling cardiocritic bike, and I've made running cardiocritic run. So if I go into cycling, so obviously it's not going to, it's looking for my power meter, it's looking for the heart rate, it's looking for GPS. Just going to skip that. So these screens are screens that I've chosen. Where average speed, heart rate, power, and uh, I'm not too sure what that is on the bottom, I can't remember. Now this is my sort of effort. This is my, at the top there, it's got the epoch, which is the training effect um, score that was increased as my session gets harder. Average heart rate maximum power, time of day, and pedal cadence. These are lap averages. So if I was to press the lap button, 
then um, you can have auto lap or manual lap and what you'd see here would be the average power, average speed and average heart rate for each one of my laps so whether that was an auto lap or a manual lap this is my map data from here you can use find back you can have points of interest set, you can follow routes so all your navigational features are, are, are conveniently located from that bottom button shortcut I'll never press takes me back to the first screen. Top right is start and stop. And again that's back and forwards. Okay, so I'll stop this. Ask me if I want to resume or end. I'm just going to do end. It now asks you um, a feeling, how you feel, you know, are you, was it good, tired, not good, poor. You can turn that off if you don't want to, but it's to give you an idea of um, your just your your sort of overtraining if you feel like you've been training too hard, okay, and then you get a summary. I'm just going to delete this one. Delete, yep. Okay. Just a word on these. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of sports modes. So these are mine. Open water swimming obviously uses GPS. Pool swimming, um, there's a pool length. So you set the pool length, and then every time you do a tap turn or tumble turn and a glide, it will count your lengths for you. Excuse me, back down again. Obstacle racing, weight training, circuit training, you know, it's endless, and when you go into the most counts count, you'll see that there are literally, I think there's probably over 100, and they are now customizable um, to a degree. You can't exactly say 100% what you want. You can't say, I want one field only on this display. I think you normally get three lines of data, uh, four lines of data, and then the lap summary. Um, but there's plenty of flexibility, and I'm certainly happy with what I've chose to see on my my um, customized ones. So this is my running for example. Okay so I've got um, average pace, heart rate, current pace and distance. Epoch which is the training effect, heart rate, average heart rate, Peak training effort, which is a score between one to five, summarizes how hard the session was and duration. And there's my lap summaries. And there's the, the GPS data, which would create a breadcrumb trail of where I've been. And then you can use a navigation. Find back is brilliant. I've already used that a couple of times uh, when I was on holiday in France. And it just shows you with a compass rose um, how to get back to where you started in a bright sort of pinky color line, um, showing you as a crow flies how to get back to the start. Um, yeah, so this is such a great watch. It's it's this video is not going to be long enough, um, but probably too long. Routes, you you know, you download a route from something you've already done. You then um, there's the route. It's a loop around Hunstanton, seven miles. Press navigate, and that will, if I had GPS signal, will will show me around the course. Um, how was it? It was good. I'm just going to delete that. Um, navigation. We sort of just touched upon it. Point of interests. So you can save points of interests. I've got a few local spaces, places here saved for me when I'm out windsurfing or paddleboarding. I can find my way around. Routes. These are tracks that I've already ran and then I save them as a route and then upload them to the watch. That's something you do in moves count and then you can just go and 
follow one of those. You can uh, you import somebody else's GPX route if you want as well. Your location. So this would find my GPS location now and I could save it. So if I've, uh, this is what I did on holiday. I saved my villa's location and then when I was out and about running, it just meant I could quickly go into um, the point of interest, find my villa, and then uh, it would tell me how far away it was and show me with an arrow as a crow flies how to get back there. Okay, logbook, obviously just gives you a summary of all your sessions. Everything is uploaded via Bluetooth to your iOS or Android device using the Sunto Moose Code app anyway. Stopwatch, I use it so much. I use it to time eggs, I use it for time the kids playing games, I use it to remind myself of something. Um, it would be nice if they had a countdown timer in there as well. That would be something that I would, would make it quite useful. Okay, and then settings. And I'm not going to go for all the settings. Because we'll be here all day. Um, something I didn't touch on. I've got notifications currently turned off. I'll turn them on. Something I didn't touch on was sleep. It does do advanced sleep tracking. I've not currently got that turned on either. Um, you can set a sleep target, um, auto do not disturb, and you, then you have to set a schedule of when it doesn't want to disturb you, etc, etc. So sleep tracking is well covered in this watch. Um, and activity tracking. I, I'm gonna t I, have, I did test that a little bit, but I'm going to test it a bit more. Um, the, it can do 24-7 heart rate monitoring, so if you want to know, you know during the day, periods of stress and relaxation or um, periods of activity that you didn't realize, then it, uh, yeah, that, that's useful. So that's 24-7 heart rate monitoring. You can set your step target, set a calorie target. Um, watch face. People always ask, what are the different watch faces? Well, you get the up. You get the choice of one, two, three, four, five, six. And with each option, you have a choice of color. Choose your color. There we go. Go back. Go back. And there we go. There's another face. Um, final thing. I'm running out of time. Shortcuts. Shortcuts are great. You press and hold the middle button, comes up with shortcuts. Do not disturb, alarm, watch face, settings. I'm not too sure if you can set these shortcuts. Um, I will add a comment once I find out if you can. Haven't, I've had the watch for three weeks, but mainly on my wrist. I haven't really, because I've been on holiday, haven't really played much on moves count. Um, so something I will look into. Let's just set another watch face for you. Let's go to one of the analog ones. Let's make it yellow. There you go. And again, pressing this middle button brings the different sub menus in. Okay, so this has been a bit longer than I hoped it would be, but be that's because it is such a brilliant watch. Honestly, if you are considering any GPS heart rate monitoring sports watch, if you're a triathlete, a rower, a, a swimmer, a runner, horse riding, supping, windsurfing, sailing, whatever you do, this watch will cover it. It's brilliant. 50 meters water resistant, by the way, which means it's obviously totally fine to swim with. The other watches, the Ultra and the Sport are 100 meters. Um, but for pool swimming, this is fine. So please like this video, please subscribe to the channel please visit cardiocritic.com anything you can do to support and share me is always appreciated i haven't even gone into the app which is poor of me but it's all supported by this great app um, you can't change the settings on the watch i used to be called heartwaymonitor.co.uk but i'm now cardiocritic.com um, download the app anyway it's always worth doing that and having a look but it, all the communication is done by Bluetooth, so they will now connect and sync up. Okay, thank you for listening, thank you for watching. CodyCritic.com, this is a Sunto Spartan Trainer Wrist HR, and I'm giving it a solid five out of five star review. Please check the prices from the links on the website, etc. Thank you, goodbye.